In this video, we are going to find an integer n such that n to the power of 5 equals 133 to the power of 5 plus 110 to the power of 5 plus 84 to the power of 5 plus 27 to the power of 5. This is a problem from AIME 1989. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The first thing that I'm going to do is to establish a bound on n so I can limit the number of choices of n from infinitely many of them to finitely many of them. So firstly, there is a very obvious bound is that n to the 5 is larger than 133 to the power of 5 simply because these numbers are positive. So that means n is greater than 133. The next thing that I'm going to do is to consider multiples of 27 by saying that 84 to the power of 5 is less than 108 to the power of 5. It's a multiple of 27. And for this, I'm going to say, actually for these two numbers, they are less than, both less than 135 to the power of, to the power of 5. So n to the 5 is less than 27 to the power of 5 multiplied by 1 plus 4 to the 5 plus 5 to the 5 plus 5 to the 5. And by computing, we have 1 plus 1024 plus 2 times 3125. So this sum is equal to 27 to the power of 5 multiplied by 6250 at about 1025 and so that's 7275 but notice that this is actually smaller than 6 to the power of 5 the number in the bracket is less than 6 to the power of 5 because 6 to the power of 5 is equal to 1296 times 6 and that's triple seven six. So that means this sum altogether is smaller than 162 to the power of 5 because 27 times 6 equals to 162. So we've come to a conclusion is that we can say that n must be a number between 133 and 162. After limiting n to fewer than 30 choices, I'm going to divide the entire sum by small numbers such as 2, 3, and 5, the three smallest primes. So notice that when we divide both when we divide the sum by 2, this is odd. These two are odd, while the two middle numbers, two numbers in the middle, are even. So that means this sum, which is n to the fifth is even and that implies n has to be even too or we can say that n is congruent to 0 mod 2 because if n is odd then if I bring it to the power 5 fifth power it will also be odd so n to the 5 cannot be even now after dividing both this sum by 2 let's try to divide this sum by 3 so n to the power 5 is congruent to for 1, 3, 3 is congruent to run 1 mod 3 so it's 1 to the power 5 added by 2 to the power 5 we can do similar things plus 0 to the power 5 and 0 to the power 5 because 84 and 27 are both multiples of 3 so that means it's congruent to 0 mod 3 now, if n is not, not a multiple of 3, then n to the power of 5 can ne cannot be a multiple of 3 as well. So that means n is a multiple of 3 as well. Now let's try to divide this sum by 5. It's actually e congruent to 3 to the power of 5 plus 0 to the power of 5. I'm just taking the last digit actually. 
plus 4 to the power 5 plus 1 for 7 I divided by 5 again so it's remainder is 2 so 2 to the power 5 now 3 to the power 5 and 2 to the power 5 when they add together it's a multiple of, it's a multiple of 5 so it's 0 plus 0 and for 4 to the power 5 I can say it's congruent to minus 1 mod 5 And by trying all possibilities, like when n has remainder 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, when it's divided by 5, we can see that the only possibility is that for n to the power of 5 to be congruent to minus 1 mod 5, n has to be congruent to 4 mod 5, or minus 1. They're actually the same. So that means now I have three relations. N is multiple of 2, multiple of 3, and at the same time, when it's divided by 5, the remainder is 4. Now, I know that because 2, 3, 5, they are mutually coprime, which means if whenever I take any two of them, they will be coprime. They do not share any common prime factor. So, I can say that such an N is unique if I only consider its remainder when it's divided by 30. The product of 2, 3, and 5. Because whenever I add 30 or subtract a multiple of 30 from n, then I will still get the same results. So I can only say that this will, these three results will tell me a unique result on the remainder when it's divided by 30. So let's try to solve for that. To solve this, I'm going to restrict my consideration on n into numbers from 1 to 30. So let's see. For the first two results, we know that n is multiple of 6. So that means the only possibilities will be 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30. Now, however, I need n to be at the same time congruent to 4 mod 5. So that means the only possibility would be 24. Now this means n is congruent to 24 mod 30. When n is divided by 30, the remainder is 24. So now we have to go back to our first result is that n is between 133 and 162. It can be numbers from starting from 134 all the way up to 161. And among these numbers, because there are only 28 of them, so and they're consecutive, so the remainders of these numbers when they're divided by 30 will not repeat. That means this result is sufficient for us to rule out all numbers that will that are not solutions. And notice that the only number that has remained 24 when it's divided by 30 and it's between 133 and 162 is exactly 144. So this number is our final answer.